Oh, not take you to heaven. You're going to sit with him in his throne, which is going to be on earth. That's another lesson. You're going to sit with him in his throne, even as what? Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. See, he's sitting on the father's throne at the right hand of the father right now. But he didn't promise you to come up there and sit on the father's throne, did he? Because uh -uh. Jesus is going to have a throne on this. Or read uh, Matthew 25 on your own. It tells you when Jesus come back then, he's going to sit on his throne. Which Luke 1 tells you that's the same throne King David sat on in Jerusalem. Right here on the earth, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. That's where his throne is going to be at. But the bottom line, it, don't, it ain't going to matter to some people because if they don't overcome, they ain't going to be a part of it anyway, are they? So, so much for Jesus did it all. I don't have to do nothing right. We read in John 16, 33, Jesus said that in the world you're going to have tribulation, right? But be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. But now he's expecting us to overcome the world, isn't he? That's what he said here. He said to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and I sat down with my father in his throne. You got to overcome this world of vanity. You got to start to do God's will in this world of vanity, and you got to continue to do it. And if you properly fear God, you will continue to do it. But let's make sure. Go to uh, Revelation 2. Back up one chapter. In verse 22, he just told you, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. But back to two, because once you start doing God's will, then you just got to make sure you continue. Two, Revelation 2 and verse 25. Two and 25. Okay, go ahead. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. See, it's all about him coming, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And once you find out about the Lord, now is your job just to hold on. That's how you overcome show you this is a lifelong journey brothers and sisters it ain't something you presto get overnight you know i can't go to church one sunday and i'm presto saved and that's it see people want to make it they want to take the easy way but the easy way is going to be the hard way in the end notice he said but that which you have now what you got already he said hold on to it that means you can let it go right you don't have to tell nobody to hold on to nothing unless they can drop it right you tell a child, you give them a glass of water, say, carry it upstairs and hold on to it because you know they prone to drop it, right? He said, that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Verse 26. And he that overcometh. You mean he used overcome again? He really expect us to do this thing, don't he? Mm -hmm. He that overcome. That's why the title is a world of vanity overcoming. He said, and he that overcome. Now he's going to get into some specifics of us overcoming, how we got to overcome. He that overcome it and do what? And keep it my works until the end. You mean Jesus got some works for you to do? We haven't heard this. I mean, the average preacher said you ain't got to do nothing, except give them some money now. They got to get paid. You got to give them some money. They, gonna, they ain't going to throw that out the window. But everything else, they say, oh, you ain't got to worry about that. What about this? You ain't got to worry about it. Look, Jesus is expecting some overcoming, isn't he? He said, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Works! Just like we read in Matthew 16 early in the lesson, he said he coming with his angels in the glory of his Father, and he's going to reward every man according to his works. That is so clear. But yet many people don't think they got to have no works. They don't fear God enough to get their act together. So church just become a play church where you can go and act like you believe in God and go on about your business, but not with the Lord. He said, to he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I do what? To him will I give power over the nation. Oh, he's going to give you some power over the nation. Not up in heaven, right? Because the goal is to, God is to rule on this earth, him and his saints. He said he's going to give you power over the nation. We talking right here on this earth, right? That's what you're getting for overcoming. It's right here. That's why the Bible said the meek shall do what? Go to heaven? No. Nope. It said the meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus said that in Matthew 5. David said it in Psalm 37. Same thing. The meek going to inherit the earth. It's all about this earth. He's going to straighten this world of vanity out in a minute. One more place. Ephesians, I mean Hebrews 2. 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. See, we have to read all these scriptures to let the Bible explain itself. That way, regardless of what you think, you know you read it out of your Bible. That's why I say this over and over again. It's just so funny when I see it happen. I read stuff to people just personally on the street somewhere. Read stuff to them out the Bible. I had them take my Bible and just snatch it out of my hand because they'd be so amazed. Like, wait, wait a minute, what, you, what kind of Bible is that? This is a Bible, the one you ain't been checking out. But they think I got a funny Bible. That's sure they just ain't heard nothing in the Bible. It's the same Bible you, I said, look, I'm telling you, write it down, go home, read it at home. It's going to be in your Bible. They're like, I ain't never heard nothing like that. They be flabbergasted. Well, we don't get nobody. We don't get preachers reading Bibles. We get a nice show at church. Hebrews 2. I'd rather get it from the Bible than what somebody thinks. Hebrews 2 and verse 5, and we're going to wrap it up. Because, again, this is a world of vanity, but we're striving for another world, brothers and sisters. It's going to be another world, and it's coming soon to a neighborhood near you. A whole nother world on this earth. Hebrews 2 and 5, go ahead. For unto the angels have he not put in, in subjection the world to come. Well, if we speak. See, God going to scrap this, 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 this world of vanity that we're living in right now. We saw that the world and the fashion thereof is going to pass away. But who, he that doeth the will of God is going to abide forever. So he's going to scrap this world. And he just told us in Revelation, if we overcome, keep his works to the end, he's going to give us power over the nations. And he's going to have his saints running this world. And it's going to be nothing but peace. It's going to be goodness. See, this is the heaven you want to get to. This is heaven right here on earth. It's going to be nothing but goodness. That's what he's talking about. He said, for unto the, and the angels not going to even be in charge. See, angels overseeing things, they running around here taking care of God's business now. The Bible says they're an innumerable company of angels. So they run around trying to help us and keep it straight as best as they can in a messed up world. But in the next world, the saints are going to run it because we're going to be immortals by that time. So that's why he said, for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, well, what we talking about, well, we speak. Who he put in subjection? Those of us, mankind, men and women. We're going to be running, provided we overcome, though. Go ahead, verse 6. But, but one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, uh -huh. or the son of man that thou visitest him? Mm -hmm. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did it set him over the works of thy hands? See, that's in Psalm the eighth chapter where he said, "What is man that thou visitest him and mind for him?" Because he didn't put all this honor and prestige on man. If you overcome, you're gonna be a ruler with him in this world tomorrow. So that's why he said, right now, in verse seven, he made him a little lower than we lower than angels now. But in the end, we're going to be high names. I can read to you what the Bible says. You're going to even judge angels if you do what you need to do now. You're going to judge angels. We're going to be above angels. That's what we strive for. That's what immortality is all about. So I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs>